So another another great questions come uh, come um, down down from Twitter, and it's it asks us about um, children being nervous to experiment. They're, they're so worried they're going to do the wrong thing, and uh, no, that's the wrong question. You know, they're really worried about about all that. What do we do? What how do we help them to be brave about? being wrong. And let's not just talk about children here, because this does involve teachers as well. People asking, moving, thinking about things. Yeah, sure. One of the things that, that we don't do is give people enough opportunity to make decisions and get feedback. And what it, it always amazes me that in a classroom, you ask kids to raise their hand. Well, that means they can choose to answer or not answer. Mm -hmm. Yet what we really want is for every kid to answer every question. And so things, technologies like the clickers, technologies even like red cards and green cards, uh, will say, okay, you have to answer every question. Once people get used to answering every question and getting feedback and saying, this is not summative, it's formative, it's gonna help you do it better, then I think we can get over that to some extent. And, and I, I, no, I absolutely agree. And I, and I like it when they see the data up on the screen, they don't feel, um, you know, if, you, if I ask you the question, you're the kid with your hand up and you get it wrong, you're the only one who gets it wrong. When everybody's given an answer, you can see that actually, you know, 50% went for B, but, you know, 30% went for D. So, well, I got, it. I, I got not the answer the teacher was expecting, but, you know, there's a, there's a debate to be had about why we thought that. But I also think we, we need children to be brave enough to fail a little bit. You know, I, I do some coaching sailing a bit, not so much as I used to. And one of the things we used to say there was, if you're not over the start line, one, one in ten, you're not trying hard enough, you know. So, you know, you want children to be wrong from time to time because that means they're really pushing at the boundaries of, what, of, of their understanding where them, how fast they might go. And that goes back to games, because games give you the opportunity to do it again and again and again, make different choices, see what happens. And the, some people complain about games, saying that, well, it's not real life, and if you die, it's not, you, you can get up again and start over. But that's the whole advantage of it. The advantage is that you, you do it, you then very quickly in your mind process all the things that could have gone wrong and that made you die, and then you start over again and do it better. You know, I think when we had the very first computers in the very first classrooms, um, the, the, the research that came back almost immediately was that children could take risks with their learning. Mm -hmm. You know, with their spreadsheets, with whatever they, they took risks with their learning. I don't think that's changed. And I think technology has been the, been the way that's allowed them to take risks, to maybe go too far and too fast or too different and be not quite what was expected, but to recamp and do it again and do it again. Mm -hmm. And I think that's been just, that's been terrific. But, uh, but in the American economy, you know, being wrong is a, a big advantage, isn't it? I mean, your, your guys are always going bankrupt all over the place and wear it like a badger carriage. Bankruptcy here is a huge, huge shame, you know. Uh, well, there is, there is more of a get up and perhaps start over again mentality. But we still also do have shyness. And one of the things that I've been doing in schools with kids is helping them get on camera and say, okay, now that, your, now that your classroom has a little flip camera, learn how to be interviewed. Sit there, have one kid be the director, the other kid uh, be interviewed, learn how to smile on camera, how to look at the camera, how not to be nervous, how to talk, and how not to fidget. Both students and teachers need to be able to do that so that they can share through these videos and not feel uncomfortable making short videos, which is the big means of communication. And, and of course, if you construct, then you can deconstruct, if you can deconstruct, you're on the route to being able to critique, and that's, uh, that's what we want from learning, is it? Absolutely. But wrong, well, we embrace wrong, I think, uh, together. <laughs> Feedback. <laughs>